Good morning. My name is Marwan Masher. I'm uh, vice president at Carnegie in charge of the Middle East program. Welcome to this very special event today. Let me first say that uh, before I introduce our speaker, that today's address will be in Arabic. There is simultaneous translation, so for those who have not uh, uh, obtained the receiver and headset, please do so uh, as necessary. The headsets are outside the room. Uh, Sheikh Rashid will uh, give his address in Arabic, and after that, uh, uh, you can ask your questions in English, but there will be, uh, like I said, simultaneous uh, translation. It's uh, a real honor to have Sheikh Rashid Ghanoushi with us today. Uh, I don't need to introduce Sheikh Rashid to you. He is uh, extremely well known. Of course, he is the co-founder and president of the Nahda Party in Tunisia and a leading Islamic thinker. Sheikh Rashid has played a very important role in the uh, agreement, recent agreement on the constitution in Tunisia and on the whole uh, transition process that is going on there. For those of us who hope for a more pluralistic Middle East, a region that accepts differences and tolerates dissent, the record of the last three years has been a disappointing one. Tunisia has been the one bright spot in this picture. While everything is not perfect in that country, the new constitution passed by the National Constituent Assembly is a major accomplishment. It is one of the most progressive, democratic, and pluralistic constitutions to have ever been adopted in the Arab world, if not the most progressive. After months of very difficult negotiations, the consensus that eventually emerged among the country's Islamic and secular parties gives us hope for the future. Compromise is never easy, but it is critical to progress. In the end, Tunisia's political factions succeeded in overlooking their differences to develop a political framework that offers, I think, not just the entire country a chance for a better future, but that can also serve as a model throughout the Arab world. Sheikh Rashid, or deserves as, as much credit as any one individual can claim for these developments. When polarization threatened to derail the transition last summer, he steered his party towards a series of concessions, most importantly relinquishing control over the government that helped pave the way for the Constitution's passage. Of course, politics in Tunisia is just beginning. Many of the fundamental political questions confronting the country, including the role of religion in politics, have not yet been decided. Tunisia must also deal with mounting economic, social, and security problems. Despite the distances it has come, the challenges to building a more pluralistic and democratic society are likely to be just as great in the years ahead. We are honored and pleased to welcome Sheikh Rajat Ghanoushi to Carnegie this afternoon. I look forward to his remarks on how he sees Tunisia navigating the challenges ahead. Sheikh Rajat. Thank you very much, Mr. Masher. Thank you for your, your coming. And uh, permit me to express, to exprim myself in, in Arabic. And I'll uh, respond your questions with my poor English. Assalamu <laughs> yes. alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am delighted to talk to you and to meet you to talk about the uh, Tunisian experience and the Tunisian model which has proven to the whole world that democracy is a dream that can be realized, like not in the Muslim world and around the whole world. 
as we are seeing in various regions. This, despite the, uh, we see the impact on uh, the Ukraine, uh, despite the setbacks that the, the Arab Spring has faced in the past. The Tunisian experience, ladies and gentlemen, has uh, proved to those who are fearful of the Arab Spring turning into a fundamentalist winter that encouraging military coup is not the solution, and that it only leads to chaos and destruction in contrast to the freedom enjoyed by the Tunisian people today. The Tunisian people who, put, uh, the, the, uh, who bravely defended the revolution and the democratic transition and stood against the terrorists and those who plotted to bring about uh, a chaos and, uh, to this all in this uh, country. The Tunisian experience has proven that the cost of encouraging coups and giving up on the Arab Spring is much more greater than showing patience while nations find their own solutions for their internal crisis and disputes, which are often caused by a lack of experience on the part of the political elite and a need for more time to be accustomed to democratic practices after decades of despotism. The Tunisian experience has proven, ladies and gentlemen, to those who are doubting the intentions of the Islamists that there, is, there are no uh, contradictions between Islam and democracy and the victims of decades of repression, marginalization, and exclusion are not uh, carrying uh, uh, hatred on the part of Islam or desires to revenge, but, but rather an enlightened modernist civil project as embodied in the Tunisian constitution, which has guaranteed the widest possible consensus as it is, has been adopted by 200 in the parliament out of 217 members. In other words, in a, a, a majority that needs a complete uh, 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 approval. And despite the regimes deposed by the, uh, re, by the revolution uh, justified that the repression of the Islamists uh, 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 was a necessity to face uh, 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 to protect democracy from a theocracy and the protection of security of the world from terrorism and other slogans that you were used to justify violations and the killing of hundreds under torture and the imprisonment of tens of thousands and the banning of all freedoms. Tunis today has been able to prove that this is false and the danger for democracy and security and stability is despotism itself and that there is no uh, reason for despotism anywhere in the world. To has proved that this was, uh, these accusations were false. Tunis today is saying to the world and to uh, the freedom, the, pre the uh, friends of freedom, that there is no contradiction between Islam and democracy, and that the Islamists stand at the forefront of those defending the right to difference and cultural diversity and freedom of conscience and uh, equality between men and women and all the values that establishes a society of development and justice. The success of the Tunisian experience, ladies and gentlemen, was not spontaneous, nor did it uh, was uh, surprising to those who uh, were following the, our uh, uh, march for, since 1981 and the Nahda uh, uh, to, uh, confirms the uh, compatibility between Islam and democracy. For, therefore, when we adopted democracy, uh, it was not really an, uh, a, 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 a new. After we won majority in the elections of the, uh, of the constitutional co uh, conference, uh, our call was for unity and not no, no, uh, and coexistence between the Islamists and the secularists and the two principal families and the two f components of the Arab elite and without cooperation between them the state will never be able to achieve stability and, uh, and the democracy will never succeed. The Troika, which was a coalition between two secularists and an Islamic party, expressed this conviction that 
the success of democracy requires not only the rule of the majority, but also requires consensus between the Islamists and the secularists as the two main components of our elite. Whether in the government or in the, uh, on the council, Lahda was committed with the, with the same consensus and uh, to give priority the uh, uh, the uh, uh, public interest of, uh, of Tunis and not to hurry writing the constitution but to maintain pe social peace and the unity of the state until we have been able to reach the greatest sacrifice which is to give up the government in order to get out of this political crisis which threatened the revolution in the country. We gave up the government not under the pressure, not under pressure but uh, with the, uh, through an, an election that we lost uh, or the uh, revolution or a coup, but we gave, we sacrificed governance and our position in it for something that is more important than that is to give the Tunisians a democratic and acceptable constitution to all. People were saying that they, uh, Nahda will not give up governance and the idea that the Islamists are asking for democracy for a first, for a time, one time only until they get to power and then they will give up democracy. We have proven to, in Tunis that the Islamists can give up uh, authority even without elections. And this is something that very rare in the world. And uh, it is against the nature of people. Uh, the nature of people is to insist on governance. Uh, but we were able to uh, achieve victory against ourselves before we uh, succeeded against uh, dictatorship. Many people believe that Nahda will not give up governance even if it loses elections and that democracy does not mean that more than it is simply getting to authority and monopoly over authority. But this encourages us to prove to our partners and to our people to the world that these are only simply fears that are not justified in Tunis and that the Nahda is a political party that is democratic and mature and uh, is deeply rooted in Islam and in democracy. Today nobody can to make, make doubts about the uh, uh, democratic intentions and our political reality and our respect to uh, a civil system. Nobody can uh, claim that uh, the Nahda left uh, governance uh, because it was forced to but uh, because of uh, various considerations most important of which is first, that our giving up governance came in within the framework of, of uh, a complete com uh, 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 move toward uh, a national agreement and in issuing a constitution. Our vision was very clear that the goal of reaching power in the transitional period was to accomplish the constitution and to lead the country toward elections and all of them require consensus and uh, uh, national unity. We uh, we refuse to have a constitution for the majority that is imposed on the minority. We understood the requests of some of the political powers regarding transparency of elections and the necessity of uh, having a, a neutral government to supervise the elections so that there will be no doubts about the elections which will be that, and that it's not done under the supervision of one party. We also rejected to decide the issues on the street, even though uh, and we refused the, the, the division between the Islamists and, uh, uh, and the secularists, and we kept channels of communication with them, and we accepted the national dialogue because we understood very well that the struggle and confrontation is not going to resolve the problems, but because Nahda is the greatest party in the country, it is required required to provide the most concessions to protect the revolution be, because uh, so our responsibility was larger and we say thirdly that uh, leaving governance uh, was achieved after the success of the national deregulation not a product of pressure in dealing with the crisis we have agreed to implement the roadmap 
uh, 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 and uh, the resignation of the government after they reach a consensus about the head of the government. And we recognize the role of the civil society, such as the trade unions and uh, organizations that monitor human rights and the uh, the, the uh, 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 to, to make the civil society a, a, a middle group between uh, the uh, the other parties. We saw in Egypt the army intervened inside of one side against the other, which was not, did not happen in Tunis. Uh, uh, the Tunisians on the 23rd of October uh, went out to elect a foundation uh, council to prepare the constitution and we realized that the people will hold them accountable for this inter historical mission he, the, and uh, the constitution and its contents a constitution that establishes democracy and a modern uh, society that is respected by the Muslim Tunisian people a, a constitution that does not uh, give priority to the majority over the minority. We want them, we want the Tunisian people to see themselves in the constitution, and this is what was achieved. On the other side, there were several parties that pressured to have a conservative constitution, and to the left from the secular, moderate secularists. And, and the secularists uh, pressure, uh, uh, pressured to have a constitution that is contradictory to the identity of the Tunisian people. Well, like feel, at the, the end, the middle one and uh, uh, those who believe in coexistence between the Islamists and the secularists. The victory by the centrist will make the constitution a way to collect between all Tunisians and uh, will give us benefits and will prevent us from moving toward the right or to the left, which is needed uh, by Tunis to follow the middle road. The Tunisian constitution is based on a vision for uh, Tunis in the future. We do not want a text that uh, uh, establishes uh, revenge uh, to uh, 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 simply to support one political direction against the other. Uh, uh, those who can be winners today can be losers in, in, uh, uh, in the future, and uh, this is the product of a short-sighted policy, but we wanted a constitution that provides, that protects the protect, uh, protection for all the rights of the Palestinians and agree with the uh, dream of all those reformers since the 19th century, such as Khair Deen, who wanted to combine the values of Islam and the values of modernity with Without any contradiction. And this is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, are some of the aspects of our experience which can be summarized in one word the national consensus instead of uh, struggle and disputes. This is the word that ga gave uh, Tunis a constitution for the revolution and got us out of a very suffocating ex uh, experience and now leading us to uh, elections for Tunis. Uh, to uh, 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 establishment one of the Arab democracies, we were able to reach national consensus with the assistance of civil society organizations. Uh, when uh, the struggle uh, between politicians uh, w uh, went up uh, during the, the uh, political crisis by establishing a road map to get the country out of this crisis which was about to uh, 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 happen, the Tunisians were united around their civil society organizations and were patient for six months of dialogue until they were able to reach this consensus. Consensus in Jordan was achieved, and I think the political elite is committed to a large extent to support the government of Mr. Mahdi Jum'a, which is blessed by the, uh, the Tunisian people, and we call on our friends in the world, including the United States of America, to support the government of Mahdi Jum'a, uh, because its success will be a success for democracy during this transitional period. Our country, ladies and gentlemen, is united and uh, now uh, in the face of the terrorism and the political elite knows very well that return 
to uh, a confrontation is not justified and, and the support of the calming of the situation will help holding elections under the most difficult circumstances because one election uh, such as spring cannot be uh, happen uh, uh, there, there must be uh, 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 to uh, 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 support the birth of democracy in uh, Tunis through uh, Of course, the economic aspect is very important in Tunisia in order that we will be sure that there will be stability and we hope that we are going to encourage national consensus by our friends all over the world to help the the government economically and reforming the donor uh, uh, organizations so that we can support our thing, which is the only lighting candle in the Arab Spring. Tunisia, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, flipping over one page of its uh, political history and it has put uh, democracy on the right path and it has given the world the first constitution of the Arab Spring which ends uh, the era of uh, the uh, repression in the Arab world because they, are, they say that they don't have the genes for democracy which is not correct but Arabs have already the genes. Arabs like others, as all uh, creatures are uh, well prepared for democracy and they are able to uh, exchange the authority and rotate the authority and are able to uh, achieve a constitution that will uh, make for the uh, freedom of conscience that ensures the rights of women and minorities and it will keep the uh, development, uh, the continual development, and it's going to establish the uh, organizations that can bear the responsibility as well as political organizations that are taking care of human rights to observe the behavior of the ruler. I think that this should go ahead even after the next uh, uh, elections that are going to take place because we need consensus between the Islamists and seculars, but the uh, Islamic tendencies have to make for Tunisia of tomorrow and that the Tunisian ship has to take off by all the Tunisians and not a part thereof. And I think that our uh, party is going to be a front runner in the next uh, elections, but it shouldn't be governed by one party only when the uh, organizations are fragile. Uh, having 51 majority is not enough. We have to have a stable and, uh, government and stable democracy. We believe that the country will need a coalition government that brings together the main parties in the country in order to achieve stability and strengthen democracy and its institutions. This is the Tunisian lesson, uh, just a small country with its uh, geographic boundaries and its uh, uh, geographic uh, resources and has democracy and peace as well as freedom. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you and peace be upon you. Thank you, Sheikh Rashid, for this comprehensive uh, speech. And we are going to start the questions right now, but beforehand, I would like to uh, welcome the uh, Tunisian ambassador and the representative of the Arab League, as well as all those who are here. Ladies and gentlemen, and also we'd like to talk about the spokesperson of the Al-Nahda uh, party in Tunisia, Sheikh Rashid. You have used in your speech all the expressions that uh, we are looking for in the Arab world. 
the national consensus and non-monopoly of the authority and coexistence between Islamists and seculars, as well as national consensus, as well as the freedom of conscience, uh, equality between men and women. We have heard about all that in the Arab world, but I think that it's there only in the Tunisian constitution. There are some persons who say that agreement to the constitution was not achieved except after the Al-Nahda uh, party has got the lesson from what has taken place in Egypt. And we would like to know your point of view in this matter. Undoubtedly, the Tunisian experience is quite different from the Egyptian experience. Therefore, uh, how can you respond to that and secondly, do you think that the Tunisian model could be applied in other Arab countries and how they can have national consensus through the coexistence between all parties and having the consensus between all parties instead of the, sec uh, the uh, separations who is taking place in many countries right now? Yes. Even uh, the situation social situation uh, in Tunisia is different from the Egyptian one or Libyan one. Each uh, society has own specificities. I think Tun uh, Tunisia can uh, affect positively the, the other uh, revolution, the other Arab countries because there are many similarities between all Arab societies. All Arabs look for uh, democracy, liberty. Uh, about uh, the Tunisian experience vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the consensus, notion of the consensus, we practice this uh, consensus not uh, uh, after some months, but uh, since the beginning, in after the October 23, 2011, when the, our uh, movement has almost the majority, we insisted that uh, the, the country, the period of transition needs the government of coalition, not government of one party. We don't like that uh, Tunisian people feel that uh, we uh, move from one party called uh, the RCD to other party called Nahda. So, uh, since the beginning, we we we. Uh, were very keen and we still very keen uh, that uh, Tunisia has to be ruled through government of coalition, especially between moderate Islamists and moderate secularists. So this, uh, this, this is the main pillar of so-called Tunisian experience of transition of, de of democracy. And uh, how others can uh, benefit from this, uh, this uh, experience? Up to them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to take uh, maybe three questions at a time. We have a full room, so please keep your questions short and identify yourself and your affiliation, please. Dr. Ma Hamid, International Center for Counter Radicalism. I have a question to Mr. Ghanoushi. Like, do you agree with the message of Said Qod uh, that launching violent jihad to subjugate people to Sharia law, as mentioned in his book, uh, The Milestone, Alamat uh, al I would like to get your answer is yes or no, please. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let's take a couple more questions. Uh, <laughs> Yes, please. 
نعم مع رسالة سيد قطب هل اتفقوا معها سيد قطب حول الجهاد حول الجهاد يعني حول الجهاد I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Tunisia نعم 1988 <laughs> a uh, fundamentalist, uh, maybe a Salafist, and a secular. And there were uh, massive coils of barbed wire all over uh, Avenue Habib Bourguiba, and, and the police were out in presence, and yet the, the National Theater was closed by the Salafists, and the, and the play was not staged. And um, I'm curious if you feel in the beginning you didn't, um, your party didn't take the Salafists seriously enough until they began assassinations, or what could you say about the role, the, the, the link between your party and the Salafists? Same question in Dubai. Yes, it's, it's very good relation. <laughs> My name is Tamam al-Barazi, I'm a Syrian journalist. Uh, Mr. Ghanoushi, uh, you, you graduated from Damascus, Yes. So you know Syria quite well. What went wrong? And what's <laughs> why we don't follow you? <laughs> and uh, what, you, what did you contribute to, to Syria, you know, like a mediator or something, you know, like you can talk to the Syrian regime? Yes. Yes, I have uh, studied in... Uh, in Damascus, but it's for a long time. <laughs> in the uh, 60s, where democracy remains of democracy still there at the time. In uh, the university, there are many conflicts between uh, students. But uh, after that, uh, Ba'ath came to power and dictator uh, uh, finished everything, every destroy every remains of democracy. Uh, I think uh, Syrian elites in opposition failed so far, has failed to reach consensus between, among them. It's failure of elite. I think Tunisian elite, even uh, there is, there are there, there is many there are many confrontation, many difficulties, they, but uh, divisions, but they succeed. Uh, they finally to reach consensus, and they save our this experience of democracy. We hope that uh, one day the Syrian elites can uh, reach some consensus. Also, there, there are other differences between uh, the position, the geography. Tunisian geography is different from the Syrian and Egyptian uh, geography. So it's uh, this... Uh, put uh, heavy responsibilities, uh, heavy elements and difficulties on, to, on uh, Syrian, on, on Syria and Egypt. But uh, I'm, I, I'm extremely believe that one day then they reach their democracy. They succeed to get rid of with dictatorship. Uh, the regime of Assad, like the regime of Sisi, has no future. Because there is the Arab Spring has achieved uh, 
uh, and a very important achievement. I mean, the, the fear has collapsed. Uh, Arab, people, Arab people discovered through this revolution that the ruler, the, the despots are not uh, strong enough. People discover their capacity, their energy. So it's not easy to to uh, to put it back into the bottle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> To put the genie back in the bottle. It's, uh, so it's a matter of time. When these people will uh, reach its democracy, matter of time. But uh, going back is it's not uh, possible. So I am very optimist that uh, uh, Arabs will reach their democracies uh, sooner or later. Uh, about uh, Sayyid Qutb, Rahimahullah. هل اتفقوا مع رؤيته للشريعه؟ الجهاد لفرض الشريعه. الجهاد لفرض الشريعه. سيد قطب his personality his his personality is very very complicated. He's uh, he's poet. He is uh, also a deep. <laughs> Say you you couldn't deal with Sayyid Qutb with this uh, logic <laughs> because Sayyid Qutb his personality is has many dimensions. You couldn't deal with a personality like Sayyid Qutb with uh, uh, yes or no is. He, because he is not a lawyer, he is not. He is a deep. He is philosoph, philosopher. He is. A, I'm not agree. I criticize Sayyid Qutb in many issues. One of them is the notion of jahiliya, the notion of uh, pre-Islam, 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 pre-Islam. pre-Islam or the, uh, he considered that. Our societies are not Muslim, like not Muslim or uh, like pre-Islam. The text of Sayyid Qutb are very complicated. We cannot deal with them with this simplified logic. But uh, we can contradict. I contradict many many uh, concepts of Sayyid Qutb rahimahullah. I'm not agree that uh, uh, his position vis-a-vis the others be, uh, who are different from us. The third one? The Salafiyin. Oh, Salafiyin. <laughs> <laughs> The other uh, <laughs> subject also is very, <laughs> is very complicated. Easy yes, he not easy subject. This <laughs> our relation uh, Salafism is not simple concept. Also, it's very complicated. There is many differences within the Salafism. There is, uh, uh, for example, uh, of vis-a-vis using violence. Some of them use violence, some of them not. The jihadist, it's uh, uh, only only branch of Salafism. In Tunisia, there are three Salafi parties recognized by the government because they, they don't use violence. Because the state has not has no problem with the ide- ideologies with the, the value uh, the ideas the ma- the 
message, the role of government is to security, to, to uh, guarantee security, to uh, implement justice, to give service to people, but about their uh, faith, their ideologies, it's a matter of society, not a matter of, of uh, state. Imposing any model of life is not a matter of state. It's, uh, uh, the society has full right to choose any model of life. How uh, he dress, how the dress, eat, he, it's a matter of society, not a matter of state. State, it's a role to impose security, to implement justice, to give services. So uh, w- once the government c- uh, confront with the Salafism, when they take weapons, when they try to impose themselves, their model on the society and use violence. So once when uh, our Salafis work uh, to spread their ideology within the mosques and in society, we leave them. Once they start to smuggle weapons from Libya and to train and to, and to confront with the, the police, the government uh, classify them, classify this uh, branch, Ansar al-Sharia, as terrorist group and uh, declare war against them. It's matter or no, not matter of idea, it's matter of of uh, uh, se- security. Yeah. This phenomena is very complicated one. Well, it has to be uh, fought in uh, many, with ma- complicated medicine also, <laughs> uh, to uh, guarantee the freedom, to uh, develop the area where they uh, uh, grow up, it's the poorest area in Tunisia, so that there is lack of development. Uh, and uh, the role of the imams, the thinkers, to rethinking Islam, to convince people that Islam is not, uh, is not violence, is not... Uh, uh, anti-women, anti-artists, anti-democracy. Islam is justice, mercy, science. Uh, So uh, these uh, young people are victims of lack of knowledge about Islam. So this phenomena is very complicated, needs to be uh, corrected by by complicated solution. Let's take it. Yes, sir. Over there. Yes. Khalil Alan from the Middle East Institute. I just have two questions for you. The first one is about the uh, the presidential elections. Will Nahda nominate someone for, for the presidency or not in the upcoming elections? The second one is about... In any uh, way, it's not me. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, very kind of you. Okay, if not you, will Nahda support anyone else uh, to the presidency? The second question about the internal division within Nahda. Some people are talking about this, this, these divisions after the Constitution, that Nahda gave concessions and they uh, could not satisfy all of grassroots of Nahda uh, from within. To what extent is it true? Uh, is there any division within the Nahda or not? Thank you. Why are you intervening in <laughs> our kitchen? <laughs> yes. The woman in the, with the glasses, yes. Tala Haikal, American Task Force on Palestine. Um, do you still stand by your claims that women are complementary to men? And what is the Nahda doing to include more women both in politics and in the labor force? هل ما زلت تعتقد ان المراه مكمله للرجل او وماذا تفعل النهضه ل يعني اطفاء المساواه عليها تفضل بليز
I'm Asil Awadi, um, a former member of the Kuwaiti Parliament. Um, you spoke about the Islamist experience as it is a one unified body. Um, you know, you, you talked, uh, we're very proud about your experience, but our experience is totally different. And, and I think in all Arab words, uh, the skepticism about the Islamists when they gain power is still, I think, valid because of their behavior. They didn't, show, they didn't share, obviously, your vision, and they were not tolerant. Our Islamist is not tolerant at all to differences of opinion or to secularists. So, um, I mean, I, do, I, I just want to know what, what do you think about the Islamist experience with the Arab Spring? Uh, because we're not going to talk about Tunisia because Tunisia is the exception, really. The, the, the model that we are all proud of. But we can't generalize uh, when we have just one exception. Uh, we heard your opinion about Sisi, which is totally understandable, but I want to hear about your opinion about Morsi and other um, Islamists who actually had shared, had, had their share in power in other Arab countries. Thank you. Yes. The first question about uh, whether Nahda will uh, represent uh, uh, candidate in presidency elections next. Uh, this uh, decision has not yet uh, made. All uh, parties, Tunisian parties still, uh, still uh, Negotiating? Waiting, <laughs> negotiate. <laughs> but uh, soon they, uh, they will take, the, they will decide their position. And yeah, I, I expect that Nahda will not uh, have a candidate in presidency. I expect, but uh, things has not yet decided. In any way, Nahda insists that uh, if our people uh, renew its, uh, its uh, confidence in Nahda, even if Nahda has the majority, uh, we insist that uh, uh, the government has to be coalition government between Islamists and secularists to guarantee that the third step of uh, transition de democracy will succeed also. We, uh, we are very keen that democracy in Tunisia will not be an accident, but it will be a future of Tunisia, not a simple accident. So uh, it can be a simple accident. <laughs> So uh, this risk, we are aware that uh, of this risk, uh, democracy can be simple accident and uh, uh, the dictator come back. So we have to, to guarantee the government of consensus, not government of simple majority. Are there um, the confrontation or differences within the Nahda? Yes. Yes, Nahda is a modern uh, party, not led by uh, Sheikh Sufi. <laughs> Sufi. <laughs> Sufi Sheikh. <laughs> but, or Supreme Qaid, Supreme Guide. So Wali al Faqih, we have not this uh, notion. So it's a modern party where there are many wings, many confrontation. And finally, uh, the institution of the party decide. Uh, but all Nahda, we all our members believe in uh, 
democracy, believe in, is in moderate Islam, believe uh, in refusing using violence, and believe that uh, the decision has to be made by the institution of, uh, uh, of the, the party and all people has to obey of the, this decision. I think our party is uh, the main party in the country and uh, the most unified party in the country. Uh, about the women rights, it's very, this issue is very important in Tunisia. It's part of uh, the Tunisian uh, model of democracy. If permit me, uh, I would like to leave the parole to uh, our sister, uh, Amal Azouz, to speak in behalf on women, not, not me. <laughs> Can can you use the podium because of the microphone? Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you, Sheikh Rashid. Thank you for allowing me this uh, opportunity. Uh, first of all, yeah, okay. My name is Amel uh, Azouz. I'm uh, a member of the National Constituent Assembly, and uh, particularly, I'm a member of a very important constituent. Commission, that's com Commission Number One, dealing with the preamble and the basic principles and the amendment of the Constitution. Uh, I'm also a member of the Shura Council of my party, Nahda. The Shura Council is supposed to be the highest institution in my party. Uh, as for women's question, I've, to be frank with you, I've always. Uh, like them prefer to talk about citizens in general, men and women, uh, because I'm supposed to present men and women in my, in my country. But because women's question has been used as an alibi, has been exploited even very much in my country, has been used by political parties to attack another political opponent. So I'm obliged to answer back and to respond to those to many allegations. As for let me let me start by the first part of the question, which is uh, complementary. The question of complementarity. Uh, this question has been dealt with in uh, Commission Number Two, Freedoms and Liberties. I think that's of Freedom and Liberties. And the context in which it has been presented is not the one which has been perpetuated afterwards or which was perpetuated afterwards. Because even in Arabic, the camel, it means one, I mean men, complementary women and women complementary men. It's not the same as in French, la complementarité, for example, or in English, the same. What uh, the way it has been dealt with in that commission and those who have been even presented, who those who have pre presented that uh, uh, um, notion, if you want, what they meant is trying to put an end to men's selfishness. There are public spheres and uh, private spheres, spheres. And what we wanted exactly is to bring men back to the private spheres and get women out to the public sphere. Why are we supposed women all the time to be confined to the private sphere? Why are men only supposed to be in the public sphere? So let us, you, you come to my sphere with children and education, all of the, those affairs or matters women are supposed to deal with, and men is supposed to deal with um, the serious matters. So this is how things, but because this very issue was a matter of controversy, it was controversial, my party said, let's put an end to this. This constitution gathers, joins, and any issue which is a matter of conflict, we should get rid of it. So we got rid of it, and we still believe, we continue to believe, we have always believed in theory and practice that in gender equality, that men and women should 
participate in the building, in change, in a very big mission, if you want, social mission of change, okay? Uh, uh, is you, if you go back to the writings of Sheikh Rashid and the writings, our thought, our programs, our communiques also, since the 80s, I belong to this party. I started belonging as an activist, as a student activist in this party in the 80s, and I was aware of what I'm doing. This party believes in women, in women's addition, in women's participation. That's why I chose to, to be an activist inside this, uh, this, um, this party. Uh, as for the, the Constitution now, as for the Constitution, nothing came under pressure. These, uh, these are our convictions and beliefs. Although there are certain people who'd like to show the world that things here are under pressure of certain or certain faction, if you want, or another faction. I'd like to read, to cite, if you don't mind, from the preamble, uh, which I am proud to be a member of the commission of the preamble. I'd like also to read Article 21 and Article 2046, which is really a real addition I'm proud of in this constitution. In the preamble, paragraph number four, I cite at the end of paragraph number four, um, the role of the state, if you want. Uh, so all citizens, male and female, this is assuring, uh, let me read, independence of the judiciary, equality of rights and duties between all citizens, male and female, etc. In Article 26, 26 as well, I cite uh, the right, no, that's not 26, 21. All citizens, male and female, have equal rights and duties and are equal before the law without any discrimination. The state guarantees freedoms and individual and collective rights to all citizens and assures all citizens uh, the conditions for a dignified life. As for Article 46, I cite, the state commits to protect women's accrued rights and work to strengthen and develop those rights. The state guarantees the equality of opportunities between women and men to have access to all levels of responsibility in all domains. The state works to attain parity between women and men in elected assemblies. The state takes all necessary measures in order to eradicate violence against women. If you, if you have a look at our program uh, with which we have uh, conducted the campaign, the electoral campaign, we have said things like that. We said, we do defend, we are for the defense of women's acquisition in this country. The code, the pen, not the penny code, the family code, if you want, yes? Le statut du, uh, le, le, yes, the personal status, if you want. We have to defend that. Not only that, we have committed ourselves also to develop those acquisitions. We still believe in my party that women have to be represented in decision-making positions. This is what we need, really. If you want real change in women's position, we have to empower her politically, which I think is the the problem for all women all over the world. It's not only the women's problem in Tunisia. Women all over the world are being marginalized. And how can you uh, feel such exclusion? It's when you, you know the number of women in those positions, very delicate position of uh, decision making. So we continue to, to work on legislation so that uh, uh, we guarantee uh, women's empowerment, political especially, economic and social empowerment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Rashid, the question on, uh, on uh, the Tunisian is Islamic experience as an exception rather than the rule in the Arab world, uh, the member of parliament from Kuwait. Uh, I think uh, Islamists are not uh, one. There is plurality within Islamists. Any temptation to simplify this notion and uh, exposing the Islamists as one uh, is not uh, scientific. Islamism is, is social phenomena. Any social phenomena is plural. We have not simplified them 
and link them with tourism, with backwardness. So uh, we can see in this phenomena two trends, two trends. The mainstream of Islamism is uh, moderate in general. What, what I mean by moderate? Moderate, I mean by moderate, they refuse using violence to impose their ideas, ideologies. It's they refuse to go to the power through weapons or steal in the power <laughs> by uh, el el eliminate uh, uh, freedoms. I mean by uh, moderate, Islam moderate Islamists who is very keen to work within the law. And the other trends, they refuse work in the law and they try to impose their laws and, and destroy the realities, the, the law in, in practice in place. So the uh, the uh, Juan Muslimin, for example, are in the heart of this trend of moderate Islamism. But within Akhwan Muslimin, uh, within this trend, there are many, many specificities uh, according of the, uh, the reality in this uh, country and the reality in other, other countries. So, so uh, we, we cannot uh, put in the same bag the Islamists, all Islamists, because they are different. I think uh, in Kuwait there are many fractions, jihadist and uh, moderate and uh, Salafist. So uh, it's uh, it's wrong. I think it's wrong to simplify this plural ph phenomena. Okay, please. Yes. Somebody doesn't want you to ask the question. <laughs> okay, please. All right. Uh, now I'll just sit down. Uh, my name is Ken Paris. I'm chief economist for the Communications Workers of America. It's a union here. Uh, the economic situation in Tunisia obviously was one of the main causes of the revolution and is still, uh, Tunisia is still in a difficult situation. So the question is, two questions. Uh, one, does Anada uh, support or have a <coughs> plan to improve Tunisia's economy overall and specifically in the less developed areas? And two, is if so, what is it? <laughs> okay. Over there. Yes. No. Uh, you know, you made numerous references to Tunisia being a model, but I remember those days when you frequently made references to Turkey as a model. And recently I've been hearing Tunisia becoming a model for Turkey. <laughs> yes. what's, what's happened there? Could you please reflect on it a little bit? Thank you. Okay, yes. Please, yes. Stages, first democracy, second, uh, proving that it's capable to go through the transition. The third is uh, uh, what does what the Islamists provide economically to Tunis? In 1981, there was one statement by the Islamists, uh, the, the uh, needs of uh, people something to that effect, yeah. Are there any economic reading for uh, the Nahda party with regard to the situation in Tunis and the Arab world? The second question is about the Salafis. You have response was uh, not very clear. The mentality of the Salafis is the same as that of the Islamists in the Nahda. Is there any evidence that the Salafis are different from the Islamists? Because 
their uh, 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 their ideas are similar to this Islamist. <coughs> Last question. Samah uh, Al-Hanawi, Egyptian American for Democracy and Human Rights. Said Sheikh, I I know exactly your point of view on the coup in Egypt, and you're absolutely anti-coup. But do you think there is any element or any part Tunis may play in Egypt to try to bring the both party, the Muslim Brotherhood, and the army to sit together, try to come up with a way or negotiation to get out of what's happening in Egypt and stop the killing, stop the blood, and actually free the prisoners? Thank you. Again, uh, Egypt, Egypt is very important, so it's worth to, uh, to speak again about uh, this uh, very important uh, country. It's the leader of Arabs. So changing Egypt is not easy, because changing Egypt means changing the whole region. So it needs, it's the price which uh, Egyptians have to pay to have the democracy. Because if they liberate Egypt, they liberate all the region. So all, all uh, trends or power who don't care about democracy or refuse or fear democracy, they try to stop the change in Egypt. And it's clear that. Uh, is it uh, what uh, the Morsi government has done? Uh, is it all, uh, is it uh, right and uh, legitimate? I think uh, Morsi government ma made many mistakes. I think that uh, uh, Egyptian elite have failed to discuss w between them, to reach consensus. So it's failure of e elite what happened in Egypt. Uh, whether Morsi tried to negotiate and to, uh, to uh, encourage his opponent to share power with him or not, I haven't enough uh, knowledge. But uh, uh, in democracy, and Morsi is elect, uh, is elected uh, president, in democracy, mistakes cannot justify kudita. In democracy, mistakes can, 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 can be done, can be committed. But uh, uh, how we correct, uh, correct, correct the mistakes in democracy through um, uh, elections, even uh, and anticipate elections, not to go to the army and to, uh, to um, uh, commit this crime of, of uh, butchers, of massacres. So uh, soon or late, Egyptian people will regain his democracy and continue his, uh, his itinerary toward democracy, with mercy or without mercy, but I, I'm, I'm talking about Egyptian people. Egyptian people now, the main, now the youth, Egyptian, Egyptian youth in universities, they, every day they uh, protest. And uh, the, the spirit of revolution is there. No, no one can... Uh, can uh, uh, Hank. No can uh, strangle this uh, this spirit. St 
distinguish it of a economic plan for, for yes, uh, yeah. the main now the main problem in Tunisia is the economy but before the economy the politics Tunisia has very limited modest resources natural resources the main resources in Tunisia is the human resources there is a good level of education. There, there is a middle class, very vast middle class in Tunisia. We are in, uh, geographically, we are in good place in the heart of the Mediterranean. Uh, we, we missed the liberty, the stability. If we, if we guarantee the democracy in Tunisia, this is the key of economic development. Tunisia is uh, able to, to be Singapore, Malaysia, and so on, if it succeeds establishing the democratic system. So now uh, Tunisians are occupied not with the economy, but occupied with, with uh, establishing democracy. Even during the last two years, our economy uh, achieved some uh, development. Now the government started with the Tunisian economy with uh, 2% under zero, negative. 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 Now uh, the level, the rate of growth is 3% positive. But... Uh, still uh, high level of unemployment in, in the country, and we think that stability can uh, remit this, uh, this uh, problem. Uh, the program of in economy in Nahda is uh, social. Uh, we, we accept the free in initiative in the economy, but within uh, the justice within the social uh, guarantee for the poor people. So uh, we see in Turkey uh, an example of uh, fast development has done. Even we are talking many times about Scandinavian, um, Scandinavian model of economy which uh, combine between social justice and uh, free initiative, and we still develop our uh, model of, of economy. Okay, please thank you in... Uh, oh, Is there any proof for differences between Al-Nahda and the Salafists? Is there proof that Al-Nahda uh, is different from Salafis? Our brother there, he needs us to say that we are, we, we don't uh, read the Quran because they read the Quran. <laughs> 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 we don't read uh, the, the Sunnah because they read it. No, no it's, it's not uh, right to say that. Now, Nahda, the government of Nahda classify. Ansar al-Sharia as terrorist more than, uh, more th yesterday the Minister of Interior said that uh, thousands of uh, these young people have been arrested. We are not uh, happy with that, but uh, they worth to, to, to do that because they're using violence. So, we have, we, have, we have not simplified things. Things are very complicated. Islamists, all of them, they, they are the same. If we, you go, not that uh, the, there are some difference, or you can, uh, ex you can uh, uh, explain that uh, it's only appearance. It's, uh, 
it's a double double discourse <laughs> double and تعدد ادوار role playing it's not scientific method of uh, of explain the social fin- complicated social phenomena please uh, join me in thanking sheikh rashid for this excellent presentation